Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure and honor um, for me to be at this um, very special conference. Most of my visits um, to Norway to date um, have been dedicated to fishing, to hunting, to enjoying the beautiful countryside that um, you have here. Um, today's program, of course, is a bit different, um, but um, it is, of course, also very, very exciting and relevant. And I feel very honored um, uh, to start this um, always challenging after lunch session. And I will try hard um, uh, to stop you from falling into an uh, early sort of afternoon siesta and nap. As a reminder, um, uh, the title um, uh, for um, uh, this um, uh, afternoon session is the role of the individual for a sustainable future. Sustainable future for me means um, a future for this world um, that is characterized through a sound and enduring ecological, social and economic order which provides the next generations with good and ideally better opportunities than that we have encountered in our generation. Personally, I feel um, uh, that um, uh, we face enormous challenges, social, environmental, economic challenges, and we're quite far away um, uh, from the objective to provide the next generation with a world order that um, I would call sustainable. Given the magnitude um, and the diversity um, of the challenges, I strongly believe that every individual should, can and should find a role that helps shaping a more sustainable future. So is there then a specific role of the individual for a sustainable future? Well, to me, um, it is part of the beauty um, and part of the fun of this world that the talents and characters of humans are very, very diverse. And accordingly, um, uh, the roles of individuals that want to engage um, uh, for a sustainable future, I believe will be and should be diverse. In my mind, the challenge around making the world order more sustainable is therefore less around a specific definition for the role of the individual, precisely because there's so much room and so much need for so many different roles. And the challenge, in my opinion, is much more how we can get much broader and much stronger engagement from many more individuals. And so my thesis is a little bit um, that our societies, to this point, by and large, do not care yet enough about sustainability. Why do our societies not care enough about a sustainable future? And what are the main impediments that we need to overcome for more individuals to engage more forcefully for sustainability? I think there are probably many impediments, but let me just major three um, challenges or impediments that I see. The first challenge is the very human weakness to pursue short-term benefits even if these benefits come along with substantial long-term costs that far outweigh the initial short-term benefits. Almost all of us um, pursue such bad traits all the time. Think about our eating and drinking habits. Masses of people going to casinos without really having a chance to, to win there sustainably. Think about, about how our politics um, work. Our human minds, um, unfortunately, I don't think um, are wired in a very rational way. Otherwise, nobody would smoke and Coca-Cola would surely not be one of the most valuable brands around. 
what can we do um, against um, uh, this challenge? Um, I think the first step always is to be aware of a problem um, and of this weakness in our human fabric. If you know of a problem, then it's already much easier to fight against it. The second challenge um, that we have to overcome when we want to engage more people more forcefully for a sustainable future is what I believe a bit of a value problem um, that we have in our societies. There's quite some evidence that there's a significant and increasing share of people who do not care too much about the next generations and who are simply not willing um, uh, to sacrifice something today um, for the benefit of future generations. Let me share some sort of slightly random observations um, that uh, probably supporting this thesis a little bit. In most of the developed world, the share of adults who do not have kids has continued to grow. There is some evidence that adults who are not having children, not having grandchildren, are emotionally less interested in the next generations. Of course, not all of them, but on average. Enrollment with the large traditional religions has been declining in many parts of the world. And in line with that, has the number um, of people who believe in a life after death. It's probably also a fair assumption um, that on average, people who do not believe in a life after death do not care as strongly um, how the world develops after they have passed away. Another thought, there are millions of businesses out there, more than ever before, that bombard us constantly with their products, with their services, with their advertising. And in aggregate, all these messages um, that we are receiving um, have an influence on how the values in our societies develop. These businesses, in order to be successful, um, are skilled at pushing us towards consumption of their latest and greatest products and services. Without doubt, I believe our world today um, has values that are very, very different um, from the values um, that were around in the largely agricultural societies 100 years ago. I'm not sure if on aggregate um, those values are better or worse. Um, but I do believe um, that our values um, have become more short-term oriented and I also have the suspicion um, that they're further away from nature um, and the environment because societies have become so much more urban um, and because um, we, are, we have become so much more consumption oriented. Another good indicator for our shift um, in values more towards the short term um, at the cost of the long term um, is the spectacular increase of debt across the globe. The indebtedness of our societies across all levels has never been higher, which again, of course, um, comes at a cost and risks for the future. What can we do to shift values back um, or back or probably forward, but how can we shift um, values in a way um, uh, that they become more oriented um, uh, towards um, uh, building a sustainable future? I think we can do a lot, um, but I don't want to give all the answers right now um, and um, uh, leave some of that um, uh, for the broader discussions um, uh, that are following um, uh, my speech. A third impediment um, that prevents people from engaging more forcefully for a sustainable future, um, I believe are our prevailing governance 
um, systems, our political and economic um, systems. I really am convinced about the fact that our current economic, political and governance systems are built with too much of a short-term orientation. Um, what do I mean? Let me give you two examples. 100 years ago, almost all of Europe um, was governed through monarchies. Some of those monarchies were probably too long-term oriented and not dynamic enough um, to survive. But not surprisingly, after the abolishment of the monarchies, um, I believe our governance systems have shifted um, by and large too much um, to a short-term orientation. Probably at this point, they're also too short-term oriented to survive for the long term. Again, let me sort of go a little bit more specifically into sort of subcategories here. Politicians are re-elected every four years in most jurisdictions. In the US, for example, members of Congress um, can get re-elected every four years for an unlimited amount of time again, again, and again. As a result, members of Congress in the US um, tend to focus their activities very much around the next election day. That is, on average, just two years away. Personally, I think one could shift that system pretty easily, more towards the long term. Um, and one could um, shift the system in a way where uh, members of Congress are elected for five years, and they're only allowed to be re-elected twice. Then you would have, all of a sudden, a much higher share of Congress people um, who would act with a much sort of different type of orientation. So just little tweaking in constitutional setups can change things quite a bit. Another example around our sort of governance system um, relates to financial reporting. Um, our financial reporting systems, I think, are too much geared, again, towards the short term, and they're not comprehensive enough. Capital markets, therefore, are too obsessed about the short term. Um, positive and negative externalities um, of businesses um, aren't sufficiently measured, reported, and therefore um, not sufficiently taken into consideration, appreciated. Again, I'm convinced that there's a huge improvement opportunity around a more long-term oriented and a more um, a sort of comprehensive um, reporting system that could be put in place.